G'day folks, it's Rob here out on the road again and we're looking at another awesome looking aquaponics system. I'm over at Raymond's place, so yeah, I'll stop nattering on and we'll talk to Raymond about the system. So this is my system that I built, mostly on Rob's videos of how to DIY bell siphons and all this chop and flip stuff. Um, I got just spinach here, baby spinach, and they do really well. I like using baby spinach. Um, the basil's not doing as great, but it's because the pH is a bit higher because yep. I'm growing maricod fingerlings this yep. year around. Um, what think, sort of um, basil is that one? So is that's that, Thai basil. That is the yeah. Thai, that's my favorite as well. Um, yeah. I might have a little bit of low nitrogen in this system because I don't have my large fish anymore, which yeah. I gave away. The reason why is because I made a screen, a window, which I'll show you in a bit, yep. but I'm just growing some snow peas here. They always um, do phenomenally well. Yeah, so especially now it's getting lot not as hot now. Um, decided to plant a few more spinach here. How old is the system? So, um, the system is about a year and a half old. Yeah, year and a half. But yeah. it hasn't always been in this configuration. You're like the rest of us. You start with something and then oh, just build right. on. right. Yes. So yeah. I started three years ago. Um, I came across one of Rob's videos of chop and flip, and I started with one chop and flip. Then I had two chop and flip, sync them up so that the level will stay the same with the two outlets. And then I went from there to have an IBC fish tank. And then one and a half years ago, I built this system here. Excellent. Which, yeah, it's just two black IBC tanks chopped vertically and then screwed all together. And I'm just running some planks on Besser blocks you might see down here. Yep. And then this tank was originally someone's turtle tank that I bought off them on Facebook market. Oh, okay. And that's using as like a thousand litre sump tank. So if you could look closely, there's some cods in there. This is the Murray cods, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Murray cods, yeah. So got like a hundred fiddlings. I did see some before. Oh, there's one one over there. Yeah, they're popping their heads out here. If you look in those little pipes. And oh, when yeah. I feed them, they all run out. They're yeah. predator lurking fishes. Yeah, these, these guys are um, native to the, the Murray-Darling Basin here in Australia and they're one of the top table fish we have here natively. They just take a little bit longer to grow, don't they? Yeah, so apparently from research, I haven't grew them before, but the first two years take a long time. Yep. And then after that, they grow really quick. Yeah, because the other option we have here in Queensland is the sleepy cod. Did you think yeah. about them at all? Or? I did, but here they jump. Oh, okay. Out of water and yeah. I didn't want to net, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I couldn't get my hand on them as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, the good thing about these is that they, they withstand cold waters as well, which is yeah. good. Yeah. So these are pipes I have glued together. Um, they're originally for red claw crayfish. And I just couldn't get it right for yabbies. They just kept eating each other. But I am reusing these for my cod pipes. So they, they, they love hiding in there. So you can see the head popping out, um, hiding in the pipes. And when I go feed them, uh, they'll just come out and smash the food and run back in. Yeah, there's a couple swimming around over there. Yeah. And they are just fingerlings, like you said. Man. Yeah. yeah, it's going to take fingerlings. a while for these guys to grow out. Yeah, so I've got um, a 10,000 litre pump here, yep. and it just flows out into a splitter, and then that comes up and splits again to two. So the, the one that's going horizontal with the splitter is going to the main fish tank, and then these two up here splits up into a valve, so I can control the bell cycle activation Excellent. on this side and the other side. Yeah. Um, yeah, just to control to fine field, fine um, setting the um, bell activation and braking. Excellent. It's a very clean looking system, mate. Eh? It's very yeah. impressive. Very impressive. Yeah, and this is just some more snow peas. Yeah. And my ginger, before the end of winter, I think I started putting them in. Okay. And then by summer, it started to sprout. So yeah. I just got like old rhizomes, popped them in, and then they just grew. Yeah, it's one of my favorite to grow in the aquaponics as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good. Like, People don't realize that they actually do really well in a lot of water. Then I recently made this window here. So that's the reason why I removed all my fish. I got my Australian bass in here still. This is a rainwater tank, is it, that you've converted? Yes, so yeah. it's like a 3,000 litre rainwater tank. Chopped the top off, made my own lid. And I have air pump in there as well. Okay. And then just a solid lifting outlet that- um, In the center there? In the and center there. the bass. Yep. The window, what did you use for the window? What plans? Uh, so I'll, I went to a local supplier and he, um, it's a polycarbonate six millimeter. Okay. And you could get them cut out and you could drill your own holes, but I got them to drill holes for us too. So if we want to replace them in the future, okay. yeah. it's all lasered, measured. Excellent. Um, just briefly, it's 50 millimeters yep. uh, centers or you know, two inch. 
Yeah, two inch, 50 yep. mil, close enough, yep. Yep, and then I put an angle here, because on Bigelow's video, when he did it, um, five years later, he had leaking problems because of the Boeing. Oh, okay. And how he fixed it was just put um, an angle on each side. Yep. Um, but yeah, these are pretty good. You can look up Bigelow's video or any yeah. video on the internet, and they'll Rob's, show you how to. Rob's a bit of a legend. He's um, got a couple of videos. Like you said, he shows his mistakes, which helps yeah, you. Yeah, which is great. And that's out. why I got these yeah. angles in the first time. There we go, folks. There's a bit of a look at the bass. And these are an Australian bass as well. So they're about a year old. Um, they're slow growing fish, but they can grow really big over yeah. time. Uh, property we looked at yesterday have these in the back. Yep. Along uh, with, um, I think you said golden perch. Oh, yeah. Just in a, just in a weir down the back. And how are they going? Are they big? Um, I don't know. If we buy the property, I'll be able to bring you up and you can taste some. Oh, great. <laughs> That's awesome. Just quickly, the fish wanted me to remind you that we do have that Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide. It's an online interactive guide where you can learn about aquaponics if you're new to the growing method. There's a link down in the description, 1995 US. It is fully interactive. Uh, basically, you can ask it questions and it will present different sections of the guide for you to learn more about aquaponics. So do suss it out if you're new to aquaponics and you want to have a bit of a crack at learning how to start a system off the right way the first time. So this right. water is quite new. I've been, it's about a month old because I flushed everything out to do this screw, uh, window. Yeah. So it's starting to get a little bit golden, but um, over time, of course, it gets that natural gold brown color. Yeah. Just builds up all the different um, elements in there. Yes, correct. Especially if you're adding iron and things like that down the road. Yep. And the outlet is pretty much all just the same. Yeah, so similar to what Rob does in his system, got a valve here, which is handy to switch on off when you're doing maintenance. This is just a solid settler. Um, so same as Rob's, you can probably see down there. Oh yeah. Not too much solids, and I've got like a funnel at the top there. Because of that wider outlet there, there's um, a larger surface area, which slows the water flow a little bit more than if the um, diameter of that pipe is smaller. Excellent idea, man. Yep, no worries. And then that will go straight down to here. This is a flange um, cleaning outlet that Rob designed as well, and I just grabbed the same design. So this goes down here, and that will point down or to the side. And in here, it's just filled with K1s. So I saw the video of this guy with a huge koi pond and he just used K1 as a static filter yep. and it worked extremely well. Um, shade cloths is a cheap option, but I just found that this is just easier to maintain. As in when it comes to cleaning, I just use a brush like this, scrub yep. the sides, give it a few jabs, yep. um, and then open and flush it out to the garden somewhere. Excellent. Yep. And that just overflows here. Um, I do. I am fortunate that I have a brother with a 3D printer. Oh, okay. So he 3D prints grates like this for me, which stops the K1 from coming in. Excellent. Uh, which is handy. And that goes straight to the sump tank. I've been doing this aquaponic thing for about three and a half years ago, ever yeah. since I came across your video. I've been trying to convince my family members to get involved into it, but no one took interest until I made one for my dad, and then he kind of took over in the last yeah. few months. So yeah. now, he always had a 3D printer. Yeah. Um, just to print off his little hobby stuff and now he's doing it all for um, all this aquaponic jazz so it Excellent. helps me as well. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> cool. And pest pressure, you did say I came here I found a little uh, caterpillar before and squished him. Oh um, yeah. What other sort of pests do you have here? So I have caterpillars but they're not too bad as the uh, temperature is dropping down yeah. to winter which is good. Um, also I had issues with, if you come across here, there's uh, possums, so native Australian possums, they, they've been chopping the whole stem off, they've been eating it, yeah. and now there's some regrowth. Um, yeah. And same here, so what has helped with that is a fake owl. So in Australia we have powerful owls, I think they're called, and they, they, they eat pretty much the possums, it scares oh, really? them. Yeah. So that's the main thing, so yeah. I haven't had any issues since I put the owl up there and this light may have helped as well. Okay, just to show you folks, um, I'm doing a lot of close-ups because it's a pretty small area. You've, you've made, but like normally something like this might have a like the clothesline, like what's up there. So you've really made excellent use of this small little walkway. Yeah, so fantastic. when I got into aquaponic, my wife, she liked the idea, but she didn't want me to take up a lot of space. Yeah. And then, so we start off in this corner and then I just build on from this corner. So, yeah. and it worked really well because it doesn't cover any usable space in the house. Well, thank you very much, mate. I'm, I'm really, no this, this is awesome. Um, and by the way, 
The reason I'm here is dropping off Venturis for the system and I also may have helped them out with a couple of unisills. Got to spruik my own wares, folks, just to let you know that I do sell other stuff other than just nutcrackers. So I do hope you enjoyed that little tour of Raymond's system. And if you want to see more of this content, all you need to do is hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And also you could check out my aquaponics beginner's guide. Little link will pop up at the end here. But yeah, I'll let you go, Raymond. Thank you very much again, Thanks, mate. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for going. So I will see you folks next week. Maybe another aquaponics video, maybe a farm hunting video. We'll just have to wait and see. But I do hope you're all well and happy and your aquaponics and gardens are booming. And I'll catch you next week. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.